Consider parallel flow. Heat exchanger is shown. It consists of shell, and a tube. Cold fluid enters the shell, and hot fluid, enters through the tube. TH is the temperature of hot fluid and TC is the temperature in cold fluid. In a parallel flow, both the hot and cold fluid enters, the heat exchanger at the same end and moves in the same direction. You can see how little by little heat TQ is transferred from hot fluid to cold fluid. Temperature of hot fluid is indicated by red curve, whereas temperature of cold fluid is indicated by blue curve. Notice how the temperature of hot fluid decreases, and the temperature of cold fluid increases exponentially along the heat exchanger with area. But according to the law of thermodynamics, the temperature of cold fluid can never exceed that of hot fluid, no matter how long the heat exchanger is. Along the length of heat exchanger, at any instant, the change in temperature in small distance, between hot fluid is DTH, and cold fluid is DTC. Delta T is the change in temperature difference between hot fluid and cold fluid. Now, consider a very small surface area of tube of hot fluid. Green color is that tiny surface area where heat is transferred from hot fluid to cold fluid. This area is shown as DAS here. During that small temperature change, the rate of heat lost by hot fluid is mass of hot fluid times, specific heat of hot fluid times, temperature difference. The temperature change of hot fluid is negative quantity, and so a negative sign is added, to make heat transfer rate a positive quantity. The same goes for heat gain by cold fluid but the temperature change of cold fluid is always a positive quantity. Heat loss by cold fluid is heat gain by hot fluid, so these both equations are always equal. Solving above equation for the temperature and taking their differences gives. But the rate of heat transfer in the differential section can also be expressed as or you is overall heat transfer coefficient. Remember this equation exists because of conduction through wall, whereas this equation is due to energy balance on each fluid in that differential section. But the heat quantity in all of them are same. Substituting on equation A and rearranging gives. And integrating this equation from inlet of heat exchanger to its outlet will provide the final equation where the TLN is the log mean temperature difference. So as you can see, temperature difference between the hot and cold fluids varies along the heat exchanger, so it is convenient to have a mean temperature difference. Notice how the white line that is, delta T, varies along the temperature curve, it will be equal to delta T1 at the beginning of inlet, and will be equal to delta T2 at the end of the outlet. The log mean temperature difference always depends upon these delta T1 and delta T2, for getting the mean temperature difference of this temperature curve. Log mean is always less than arithmetic mean, and log mean always lies inside the area between these hot and cold curve. Whereas arithmetic mean might lie outside these curve, which might create greater percentage error. Arithmetic mean can lie anywhere as indicated by green square. It might even lie outside, so it is always convenient to use log mean temperature difference. Please subscribe for more animation videos, it will help me a lot.